Hi everyone, my name is Courtney. I am Fiber Fox Studios and I'd like to welcome you to Mosaic Monday. Tutorial today, we are going to be doing the Dyad Stitch Worked Flat. So we originally saw this stitch when I did the shawl, which I will have a link down below. And we are working a top-down triangular shawl using the Dyad Stitch. So this shawl stitch can also be worked flat. And in this video today, we're gonna teach it flat but you will be able to use this same tutorial to work a flat project or in the round like I've done here with this little cup koozie or what's for me just to keep it from scratching the table. <laughs> but you will be able to work flat or in the round using this tutorial. On the cup koozie, I just want to show you, you could use this to make a water bottle holder where you bring this all the way up and then do a strap on the actual little basket that we're making here <laughs> in this case. Take a look on the bottom. I just started out in the round, normal run-of-the-mill crochet, did a normal increase, just making sure that my stitches were evenly divided by two, since that's the pattern's multiple. And then I just began the mosaic. Once I reached the desired size here at the bottom, I began the mosaic stitch from that point forward, bringing up on the sides and fitting the little jar that I wanted it to uh, act as a little koozie, but it's more of like a, a coaster, <laughs> like uh, like a an attached coaster so that I never slide it across and scratch the table. So hopefully you will enjoy making either in the round or something flat, or of course, a blanket border out of this design. For those of you who want to use the dyad stitch for your messenger bag handle, I chained out the total length of my handle and sides of my bag. So it's one long piece, 204 starting chains. This particular stitch pattern is extremely easy to use for blanket borders since we do just have a two row repeat and a two stitch repeat. You can customize and do this on a blanket and use it as an enclosed double border to hide all your tails back here. Or you of course can use it as a transition pattern and you can work a blanket center out and use the dyad stitch in between your next set of patterns that you're adding on. So there's lots of possibilities to use this particular stitch pattern. There's lots of possibilities for different projects you can make with mosaic crochet in general. So down in the description, you will find a link to the Etsy shop. I have done a very small little chart set for this for those of you who requested that to be done, and it's available for purchase in the Etsy shop, but please remember you never need to buy anything. I'm going to teach you this entire little design in this very short tutorial here today. So this by far has got to be my shortest mosaic tutorial ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't know that we will ever be able to come up with something this short and this easy ever again because I, I just can't imagine it. <laughs> I was really very, very, very surprised when I sat down and made this shawl at how easy this just two stitch repeat, you know, worked and how easy it was to make this shawl, the dyad shawl. So I really think you're going to enjoy this. If you're new to mosaic crochet, have never done a project before, this would be a great way to get your feet wet and just try this particular stitch out working flat. You'll get very used to how we do our single crochets in the back loop and our double crochets being anchored dropping down. This is the perfect video for that. But for those of you who are advanced, you know you can always look down the description for the row start times, there's only two rows to repeat this time. So grab at least two colors of yarn, your favorite crochet hook, and let's jump in and get started. Grab color A and begin by chaining in the multiple of two over and over as many times as you would like. If you are going to be working flat, you are going to add four more chains to your final chain count and for my example right here, I have chained 10 and then added four more chains to the end of that chain count for a grand total of 14 
stitches. At the end of row one, I will have a total of 13 stitches when working flat because one of those chains is used as a turning chain. If you are going to work in the round, you are just simply going to chain in the patterns multiple of two over and over and then slip stitch to the first chain you made to form a ring and then you begin working the repeats given in this video in that same stitch that you slip stitch into. You will be maintaining your chain count that will always be evenly divisible by two. After you have your starting chain ready, whether you are going to be working flat or in the round, you can meet back up with me to continue on to row number one. It's a very short tutorial today. We only have a total of four rows to work here together. And the dyad stitch is based off of a two stitch repeat with a two row repeat for the total pattern when working flat. So now we're going to begin row one and we are going to be skipping the first chain from our hook, moving into the second chain, doing a traditional single crochet for our first stitch. So you wanna get into the stitch under the V and then single crochet just like normal from there. Now we're going to move into the repeat for our row. And row one's repeat is very simple. We're going to be putting a single crochet in every stitch working in the back loop only, except for the very last stitch of the row. So we are working by picking up just this one side, the back loop, and then from here you single crochet just like normal. When we pick up the back loop, we are working a mosaic single crochet, and that's how you're going to be working all of your repeat stitches when they are single crochet. You will always pick up the back loop only when working an overlay mosaic pattern. The first and last stitch of the row are the only exceptions. Those are always traditional single crochets. And that is so we keep nice straight sides on our project. So you're going to continue to work on down your row and then you will meet up with me when you have just one stitch left. We are now here at the end of the row. We only have one stitch left and we're going to be working a traditional single crochet in this stitch. So you have to go into the complete stitch on every row at the end of the row. That is how you work all of your row ends. Final stitch, traditional single crochet in it. So completely into the stitch under the V. And then you can single crochet like normal. And now we need to bind off. And I like to do a knotted bind off. So I chain up two and then clip my yarn and cinch that down in order to make a little knot there at the end of the row that will help you to never have your work come undone. So you will chain up two, clip your yarn, and then we are going to pull that yarn out through the top of the stitch. So just pull out your tail completely. And now you are going to place your thumb and index finger just above those two chains that we made. And we are going to pull up on our tail as we push down with our thumb and index to basically cinch those two chains into this little knot here at the end of your row, which will keep your work from pulling out. We are now going to move on to row number two and you will need to grab color B so that we can join that on. And the join I'm about to show you is how you'll begin every single row. At the start of your row, you'll notice this little side bump here. That's our turning chain from when we did row one and our starting chain, since those are done in the same exact color. We need to scoot that little bump down out of our way because that is not our first stitch. The V that you see right here is the first stitch of the row. And we need to make sure we identify that first full V and slide into that complete stitch under the V so that we can do our join on. So you'll grab color B and add that to your hook and then you're going to pull up a loop and then we grab tail and working yarn and chain one. And now you can allow your tail to fall as you go back into the same exact first stitch and we complete our traditional single crochet that we do in the first stitch of every row. So you're going to pull through what looks like about three little loops there since we're joining on. And that is how you're going to join on and work your single crochet at the start of every single row. 
From here, we're going to begin the repeat. And our repeat for row two is very simple. It's exactly like what we did back here on row one. We are going to be working a back loop only single crochet in every stitch except for the very last stitch. So to do so, we again picking up just that back loop one side of the stitch and you single crochet like normal from there. Nothing spectacular, nothing hard to do. You can just keep working a single crochet in each of your stitches, always picking up the back loop only since this is mosaic and we need those front loops later. So you're going to continue to work one back loop only single crochet in all your stitches and meet up with me when you are ready for row number three. Row three begins now and we are joining on with color A. Our repeat for row number three begins immediately and that repeat begins with one single crochet followed by one double crochet. And I'll show you how we'll be working all of our double crochets throughout this pattern. We go here into this next stitch and we work our one single crochet. Of course, you're working back loop only. And now we're going to work one double crochet. So you wrap your yarn just like normal, identify your very next stitch, and you are going to slide directly down two rows below to this front loop and pick that up. Now we don't want to pull on this, we just want to slide our hook underneath and then we grab our yarn and pull up a loop. And now we grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two, just like normal for a double crochet. So nothing different, it's just our position and how we lay this double crochet over our work that it helps to create our pattern. So that ends our actual repeat for the row. This entire row and all the rows in this pattern are just a two stitch repeat. So we start the repeat over, we identify the next stitch. You need to make sure that you're not working your next stitch into the same stitch that's occupied by this double crochet. So to check that, you can fold your double crochet back and back here on this row, there's one stitch and each double crochet takes up one stitch back here on this row. So you place that back into position and we know that this is our next stitch. So we begin the repeat again with one single crochet. One double crochet. That ends the repeat. So we've already worked the repeat twice on this row. We're going to start the repeat again, one single crochet and one double crochet. One single crochet one double crochet. one single crochet and one double crochet. So as you work on down your row, you will find that at the end of your row, after you complete your last repeat, you will have two stitches left. You do all of your row ends, just as I'm about to explain. You restart your repeat for one stitch and that goes here in the second to last stitch. And then we do our traditional single crochet in the very last stitch of the row. By restarting our repeat here in the second to last stitch, we're actually going to be evening up the end of the row so that it matches with how our row began. So in this case for row number three, we do a single crochet here and then traditional single crochet completely into that last stitch. And we chain up two, one and two. Row four begins now and we are working in color B. Row number four repeat begins with one double crochet followed by one single crochet. So here, identify our very next stitch. 
slide down, picking up that front loop that we left by doing back loop only single crochets. And now we double crochet just like normal from here. And we end our repeat by working one single crochet. So again, back loop only. That ends the repeat. We're gonna work that again together. So we're gonna do the repeat again. One double crochet. One single crochet. That ends the repeat. Start it again. One double crochet. one single crochet, one double crochet, starts our repeat again, and one single crochet ends that repeat. One double crochet to start the repeat again, one single crochet ends that repeat now we're here at our row end and we are going to restart our repeat for one stitch so for row four that means we're doing a double crochet next because that's what our repeat starts with and then traditional single crochet going completely into the stitch in the very last stitch of the row. And now we can bind off. So from here, as you can probably guess, we are going to be repeating rows three and four over and over as many times as you need to for your size project. So again, that is just rewinding back to row three and working row three and row four over and over. Once you are finished with your project and you've reached the desired size, you are going to complete row three one final time as your last row. We want to make sure that you end in the same color and that your work is going to look the same at the bottom as it does when you're finished up here at the top. So you're going to continue to work this exact two stitch repeat, two row repeat to grow whatever size project that you need. You can work in the round, flat, and of course, you can use this as a strap for the messenger bag or any other purse that I am going to have out on the channel. I am doing a couple different purse designs, so look for those coming up in the next several weeks. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this very short tutorial, and I really appreciate your time watching. Please make sure that you are giving my videos a thumbs up and commenting if you are enjoying them really helps me out and helps the channel to grow and more people to find us. So I appreciate your help in that. And that is the best way you can support my work here on YouTube is by reacting to the video one way or another. So thank you again for all your time for watching. And until next time, bye for now.